Hello! In this video we're going to be talking all about rectification. Uh, so by the end of today you should understand how it works in some nice simple circuits. Um, and we're going to talk about the concepts of full and half wave rectification as well, and how rectifiers work. And then we're going to go on to uh, getting a blast from the past, looking at capacitors, and thinking about how they work smoothing circuits. So when we think about rectification, uh, this example is this. This is my MacBook charger, um, and it has a uh, input here that's receiving mains voltage. So the voltage that you get out of the wall, that is an alternating current. So I have, if I draw this as my charger, um, I can say here's my power supply that comes in via TNB, and that is an alternating current. Uh, it's alternating at 240 volts, uh, and it's got a frequency of 50 hertz. Um, which is pretty standard in um, a lot of the world. Uh, some parts of Europe and America use 110 volts instead, uh, but most of the world uses about 240, and nearly everywhere uses either 50 or 60 hertz. Now, my MacBook has a battery in it. So as we said before, batteries give off DC. So it stands to reason that to charge my battery, I need DC out as well. So I want to, to what's going in is AC, but what I want out is something that just looks like this, have a voltage time graph. Um, so what's going in looks more like this as a voltage time graph. So the idea of rectification is how do I turn this AC into this nice, well-behaved DC? Uh, one of the basic ideas of this is we can think about a diode. So if you remember the way a diode works, um, you have a positive and negative end, um, and remember this is conventional current, um, so in other words it's from the positive end of a battery or positive voltages, so uh, we can say that in this case electrons are actually moving that way. Um, but we say that the current's moving that way. Um, what we have is this arrow on the diode. That points in the direction that current is permitted to flow. And this sort of blocking sign, that tells us that current is blocked in this direction. So for a diode around this way, if I have a positive here, negative here, the conventional current is flowing through the diode like that, which is in the direction of the arrow, so that current is allowed to flow. If I have one round the other way, well, current is trying to flow that way, but it can't because it's met by this block, and so the current is blocked. In terms of the actual construction of a diode and what it's made of, um, none of that is necessary for the CIE uh, A-level, so you can just ignore uh, anything that mentions about how they work. Alright, so what is going to be the effect of this? Well, if you think, if we're assuming that this is my uh, voltage, and we're going to say that uh, positive, uh, that means a voltage that's going, that's trying to drive current through, conventional current through a diode like this, then what I'm going to see is my output is going to look a little bit like this. Uh, so when the voltage is positive, uh, my output voltage, or my current, so let's just say current, um, that's going to look exactly as I would expect. However, once it gets to this point in this red section that I'm drawing now, this is a negative voltage. So at these points, it's trying to drive voltage in, or current in the other direction, and the diode's going to prevent it. So what we see is something that looks like this. When the voltage is positive, the diode lets it through, but when it's negative, it won't. For a diode around the other way, we'd just see the inverse. We'd see only the negative sections, because the diode is only going to let current flow when it's trying to go that way, and we've decided um, that how we set this up uh, to the right is the way that a current would go with a positive voltage. Obviously, for you guys, you'd need to just check the way the circuit is drawn to see if that would always be the case. So what we see in these examples, uh, these two pictures, are examples of half-wave rectification. And the idea is pretty simple. You can see uh, half of my wave has been turned into at least current's going in the right direction. So it's not turned it into DC, but it has meant that current only goes one way. Now that might be a really important safety feature in some chargers. Uh, for example, if you try and charge a battery um, and you put uh, a current into it in the wrong direction, it can cause catastrophic damage and actually cause fires in a battery. So often diodes are used to protect batteries um, from being put in the wrong way around. Now if you remember what we just did, um, when this one's positive, what we're going to have is current flowing through here, but we're also going to start to store up charge on each plate of this capacitor. So uh, this is conventional currents going this way, um, so electrons going this way, so I'm going to get positive charge on this plate of the capacitor and negative charge on this bottom plate of the capacitor. When my AC changes direction, a second, well, well normally if it's 50 hertz, that would be 0 0.002 seconds uh, later. So now the top of this is positive. Well, what's going to happen now? Now current is going to try to go back into this diode, but that isn't allowed because the diode won't let current flow that way. So what happens instead is now I've got a positive at this end, so now I'm going to find that I can get current flowing 
this way. As the voltage drops down and becomes lower, it's going to allow current to flow through my... Uh, sorry, I've drawn that arrow the wrong way, haven't I? That's uh, silly of me. Um, I can say that current will flow uh, through my uh, resistor. That's the word I was searching for. Through my resistor uh, via the capacitor. So it will go the other way. So it will go like that through it. And then again, a second later, it will then recharge this capacitor. So what I see is a graph that looks like this. Um, on this kind of graph, what would happen is my AC was trying to do something like this. So this red line is what the AC was doing, um, but my capacitor is smoothing it off each time um, and just making it, uh, removing these ripples. So now this looks a lot more like DC. Um, and that's about as difficult as it gets for CIE. If you look at other examples, you have to do all sorts of uh, calculations about how smooth this will be. But for CIE, you just need to know that a capacitor in parallel with uh, your load or your device, that will always give you a smoother, uh, well, smoother ripples. Um, you also, it's, it's useful to know, um, although it's not explicitly examined, um, the smooth, I'm going to just call it the smoothness, that is proportional to the resistance of your load multiplied by the capacitance of this capacitor. So if you wanted to make this even smoother and turn it into something that looked just like this, so you had much smoother ripples, um, then having a bigger resistance and a bigger capacitor will make that happen. So we've talked a lot about uh, half-wave rectification. This circuit here, this is called a bridge rectifier. And some of you should hopefully uh, remember this from IGCSE. This, this circuit will give us full-wave rectification. So again, it's pretty straightforward to think about it. If I have a positive up here, think about the path that the current will take. The current's going to go up through here. Now it can't go back through this diode. It's going to have to move down here. Um, and I have my load at this end. So it will go happily through my load, back out, up here. And when people get a bit confused is, yes, the diodes will let current go in either direction. But remember, it wants to go towards the positive. So it will follow that path. Key thing was that this top bit was positive out here. What about when the current reverses direction? Well, now it's going to come down, across, follow this diode, and oh, look, we've ended up at the same point. It's going to come down through my load, back, and now again, remember, it wants to go towards the negative, so now it's going to go up through this diode and back to there. So again, I, I wind up with this terminal being positive and the bottom terminal being negative. So just this arrangement of diodes uh, will always give us output that now is going to look something like this. Yeah, every time it tries to go negative, uh, these diodes will cause it to switch directions. So this would be my V out. If I wanted to uh, make this a bit smoother, then what I could do is add a capacitor here across my outputs, and then this will be smoothed, and it will become something a little bit like this. It's not the best drawing in the world, but for CIE it doesn't need to be. That's good enough, so it will still be a little smoother. And again, the bigger my resistance and the bigger my capacitor, the smoother these ripples will become. So that's the idea of full wave rectification. Again, we'll do some examples with this, but again, for CIE, uh, there's not a huge amount you need to uh, remember. You should be able to draw this circuit, um, and the easy way to do it, I always find, is to start by drawing this diamond shape. As long as you can get the diamond shape and remember that there's a diode on each line, you're halfway there. Then remember that one side is positive and one side is negative, and then you just have to remember to make on this side, these two point towards the, well, in fact, all of them, they all point in the direction of the positive. So I've got the positive side here, so both these diodes point towards it, this side is negative, so both the diodes uh, point with current going away from it. So long as you remember that, you'll always get the circuit right, um, and then you can always trace it out to show how it works. Again, we're going to do loads of practice in the lesson, so if you do have any questions, come along prepared, uh, and I'll see you at our next lesson.